Thanks, Astrid. Hi, hi everyone. So thanks for the introduction. So yeah, my name's Seth. And yeah, I've been working with Map Server for, for about 15 years and then a contributor for about nine or ten now. Uh, so just uh, to get an idea of who's who's in the room, has anyone used Map Server? Okay, great. And is there anyone who doesn't know, who's never heard of Map Server before? Okay, good. I can I can speed through some of the, the slides at the beginning then. Um, so yeah, the, this presentation is, is um, it's going to be about features that are already in Map Server. There's a lot of stuff in Map Server that people might not know about. So it's not necessarily new stuff, but it's stuff that, um, yeah, that it's good to, to show is there. And I'm going to be showing it using examples. So Map Server is driven from, from map files. So these are kind of text configuration files. So I'll be showing lots of examples of, of what you can do with, with map files. So yeah, map server is, um, is used for serving out data, so it's server-side, um, serves out spatial data to clients. So yeah, very similar to, to GeoServer. And yeah, it's been around for, for a number of years. So the version one was in, released in 1997. It's open source, it's a founding OS Geo project, and it covers a lot of the, well, it covers all the OGC standards. The, the kind of the traditional ones, WMS and WFS. And now in version 8 of Map Server, it's got um, the OGC features API. And hopefully there's going to be work on, on more of the OGC, um, more of the newer APIs implemented in Map Server. So yeah, map files are the, the heart of Map Server. So everything is, is configured using map files. There's been a number of kind of graphical user interfaces that have come and gone over the years, but the, the map file remains. Um, it moved to XML for a while, but that kind of came and went as well. So yeah, map files um, are kind of written in a domain-specific language, but um, it's quite human readable. It looks like XML without all of, all of the tags. So um, yeah, this is kind of an example of a, a map file. So they start with, it's, it's in blocks. So the top level block is, is a map block. And then within your, your map, you have uh, layers. So these are your layers of data. So you can have multiple layers in your, your map file. And then each layer, you can class your data. So classify the data, split it up so um, based on, on attributes. And then each class can have a number of styles. So you can, you can style your data. Uh, so yeah, the, the number of objects in a map file is, there's not many, it's, it's kind of a, a nice simple language or configuration to learn, so kind of these, there's the map at the top, and then, uh, yeah, there's lots of different blocks, but the layer one is the key one, um, and as I say, you can have multiple layers within a map file. And uh, so yeah, map files, you can write them by hand in a text editor. Um, I guess most people probably copy and paste from an existing one and, and modify it as needed. And yeah, about seven or eight years ago, I started working on a, a Python project called, called Mapify, which basically you can pass a map file using Python and you can modify it using Python dictionaries. So it's very easy to create new layers, add new styles. Um, so you can create hundreds of layers, you can create hundreds of map files quickly. So you don't have to write it all by hand. So um, yeah, that's an open source, open source project um, written in Python that if you're working with lots of map files, um, it, it's, it's quite handy. And, and more recently, I've, kind of, I've made a, a, new, a new project called Map Server Studio. And this is kind of Mappy file online, so kind of a, a hosted version. And the idea is to, to try and make it easier to, to learn how to use Map Server and Map Files. So you can, you can create your map files online, and then there's a, an open layers viewer on the other side of the page, and you can, you can render your, you can use map server to, to render your open layers output. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's what it looks like. So it's, it's free to use. Um, you have your map file on the left, you hit the, hit the serve button, and you should get the output on, on the right. So if you're starting out with map server, it, it's hopefully a handy tool to, to try and learn what the different blocks and the codes do. And there's, I'm building up a, a number of examples, most of which are, are going to feature in this, in this talk. Uh, so yeah, there's a, there's a quick video, so you can edit your map file on, on the left. And then when you hit the, the serve button at the top, you see, see the changes. So you see here, you can change the, the fonts, the background, the colors, the rendering. Um, and obviously with the map file, straight away, you have all the OGC standards available. So this is using WMS, but you can serve out the same data 
There's WFS, uh, there's vector tiles, OGC features API, just by adding in different configurations to your, to your map file. Okay, so I'm gonna go, um, the examples are divided into to raster and vector, so map server handles, handles both. So I'm gonna start with the, the raster examples. So the first one, um, so this is a feature that's been around for, for a while, but um, I didn't know about it until I was, I was playing, <laughs> playing around looking for examples. Uh, but you can take a, a raster layer, and just in your map file, you can, you can create contours on the fly. So you can have your vector, vector contour layer generated by map server on the fly from a, from a, a GeoTIFF or a DEM. So that's the, uh, the contour. And in your map file, so it's, uh, it's got its own connection type. Underneath it's all GDAL doing, doing the work. Um, but then you can, you can drive it all using map files. So you set your connection type to contour. Uh, you set your, your data source. So this, this is a TIFF, so a Copernicus, Copernicus uh, DEM. And then there's, there's a couple of blocks and settings you can do. So you, you choose the, the item in the, in the GeoTIFF that you want to use for your elevation value. And then you can set the contour interval. So this would be 10, 10 meter intervals. So you can, you can play around with those and you get different contour outputs. Um, so yeah, as I say, the map server handles raster data um, very well. So this example, it's, um, it's pulling down a satellite imagery directly from an S3 bucket. And it's displaying the, the names of the tiles and it's pulling that down from a shape file hosted on, on GitHub. So this example is really to show kind of that um, you don't have to, to store your own data. Map server is kind of ready to, to take data from anywhere. So in this example, um, you can set up, a, you can have an S3 bucket and you configure your access to it. You can put it in your map file or you can have it in a, a separate configuration file uh, on your server, which is a bit more, bit more secure. If it's a public bucket, then obviously it's, it's less of an issue. But you, you configure your access to the, to the bucket. And the layer is a type raster in this case. And then, yeah, this is using the, the GDAL, um, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, but the VSI, VSI, <laughs> VSI connection. So you point it to your, your bucket, and the map server will, will take that data. And once you have, yeah, you set your data connection, then you can use map server to render it. So this would all be done, done dynamically. And it's using a color ramp, so it will take, um, take a range of colors, a starting color and an ending color, and apply that to a, a data range. So yeah, you can, you can have your data hosted in S3 bucket and then render it all on the fly using, using Map Server. Um, and then a more advanced example, which I didn't know you could do until recently, is um, to do some raster analysis dynamically in, in your map file. So in this case, it's taking two rasters. Um, in this example, it's taking maximum temperatures um, in June, I think, in 1960 and 2020. And on the fly, it's calculating the difference between the, the temperatures to create a new raster. So this is all, all done dynamically in uh, using Map Server. So again, it's um, a type, uh, the layer type is, is raster. And then there's a big block in, in uh, just in quotes in, in the data block, and this would be kind of the GDAL, um, the GDAL format. And basically, because GDAL is underneath Map Server, all the functionality of GDAL can be, can be driven through Map Server. So GDAL has um, pixel functions, so there's a set of inbuilt functions, such as, um, in this case, it's the difference between pixel values. So it's gonna take the difference between the pixels, and then it has two different rasters. So two different sources, and then it'll dynamically calculate the difference between the pixels, so fairly standard raster analysis. But it's all done on the fly, and again, this, this data can all be hosted in S3 buckets, um, and then you can render that data, data dynamically. So you don't have to store your data on the same server, you can, you can point it at different data sources that might be updated um, on a regular basis. So there were the, the raster examples, and yeah, and I'm gonna go on to some of the, the vector examples. Uh, so this one, um, again, it's kind of to show that you can, you can take data from a variety of sources anywhere uh, on, on the web. 
So there's a repository that has um, constellations, star constellations, uh, hosted on GitHub. So again, it's um, using Visi C URL. So any, um, it's a bit hidden the, the URL. But in this case, it's a JSON file hosted on GitHub. So you can point it directly at a, a GeoJSON file uh, to get your data source. And then you can render that using Map Server. Um, you can apply filters as well. So you can actually filter the data before it gets to Map Server. So it'll filter, or maybe it's done in Map Server, you can filter the data that you're going to display. And then once, it's, once the data is available to Map Server, you can, you can style it however you want. So in this case, um, this is a composite block. Um, so you can have um, apply different effects to your, your rendering. So in this case, it's kind of blurring to give the stars a kind of a blurry effect. Um, so yeah, and then you can style the rest of the the rest of the features. You can have local data mixed in, data from other sources. And uh, recently, there was work on um, flat geobuffer support. So Map Server, you can read it using a native driver or the OG, OGR driver. Uh, so this, this file is again coming over the web, so it's the uh, counties in the US, and it's applying a color range similar to the, to the raster example. So again, it configured your access to the S3 bucket, and then you can connect um, to a remote flat geobuffers file. Uh, and the nice thing about Map Server is it can read all of these formats, so any format that uh, GDAL and OGR can, can read, Map Server can do the same. And you can also actually serve out from Map Server in any of the formats as well. So um, I was reading on the mailing list, someone was actually using Map Server to serve out flat geo buffers. So you can use, you can kind of use Map Server as an, an online kind of converter for, for GDAL as well, all through a nice WFS interface. So, um, so yeah, for the for the styling of that that example, it's taking the um, an identifier and then setting a range of colors um, across a, a range of data. Okay, so then, yeah, Map Server's been around for a while, so there's lots of cartographic options have, have been built up over the years. So this example um, shows hatching, so that's kind of the red, the red diagonal effect on, on some of the, uh, the areas of, of conflict. And then leader lines are when you don't have space to put all your labels in one place, so you have a line pointing to the, the feature you want to label, so it means you can get more labels on your map. So yeah, these this functionality has been around for a while, but um, it's worth pointing out that it exists still. Uh, so yeah, the hatch symbols, you create a symbol in your map file, and then it's a case of configuring, in your layer you can have uh, multiple styles. So you can configure the, the colors, the angle, how many lines um, uh, are used for the, for the hatch. And then for the leader lines, um, there's a leader block you can add to a class. And, and then you can conf configure that with um, a couple of settings. So it, it tests where the next space is available for, uh, for a label. So it tests every 40 pixels, and then you can set the maximum distance so that you don't get too far away from, from your feature. And then you can style the, the leader line as well, as well. So in this case, it's just a, a simple black line, but you could have dashed lines, or you could have um, colored lines, different thicknesses. Um, this example is showing graticules. So this is kind of a, a grid you can put on top on top of your data as a kind of a reference. So in this example, it's showing um, showing a, a polar projection, and then the graticules are shown in, in WebMarketer. So each of your layers can be in different projections, and then your map can have a, a single projection. A map server can reproject on the fly as much as you need. And this data is is coming from a, uh, a WMS, another WMS server. So Map Server is can serve out WMS, but it's also a WMS client. And for the, the, the graticules, you can set your projection. And then again, you have a nice simple block. So it's a, a grid block, and you can set your, your minimum interval and then the labels for your, for your graticules. And again, yeah, for the for the labels, you have a, you can set any font that you have available in your system. Again, there's lots of different settings for labels. You can have them kind of styled in blocks. You can put um, buffers around them. You can have them following the lines, following features. Again, yeah, the, the syntax there hopefully is quite self-explanatory. But um, yeah, you probably have to go to the documentation to to see what each of these each of these settings do. 
Um, this example is showing dynamic pie charts. So this feature has been around, I think, 2015. Um, so yeah, it allows you to create charts um, spatially. So each of these points would be a, a spatial location. And you can, you can then read in your data. And you can create pie charts. So in this case, it's showing the um, uh, energy uses, energy usage um, broken down. And, and again, it's, it's relying, um, in this example, it's relying uh, heavily on GDAL. So there's a big block of um, GDAL XML. And basically in your, your connection and your data strings, you can put in all sorts of uh, complicated things to, to get what you want. So in this case, it's taking um, two layers, so a country's layer, and then a CSV file hosted on GitHub. And it's dynamically joining them together based on the country code. And that's all done on the fly. And then once you have that data set up, you can use Map Server to, to render the pie charts. So yeah, this is a complicated example, but um, it was just to kind of show the, the range of things you can do with um, different data sources in Map Server. And once you set up your data block, then there's um, a layer type of, of chart. And you can set it to be a, a pie chart um, and set the size and things. And then you can use the classes to, to style the different um, colors and things on the, the pie chart. Uh, this example is showing that you can smooth geometries on the fly. So there's a, a smoothing algorithm. So if you've got kind of jaggedy lake features, you can apply smoothing um, at the layer level in, in Map Server. So kind of the blue, the blue jaggedy line is the original feature. And then there's a couple of settings you can do, and then the, the, the kind of light pink features are, are the smoothed version of the geometry. So this, this is a vector layer, so it's set to type polygon. And then there's um, a geom transform property, and that can, you can use, a, there's a few different functions available. In this one, it's using a smoothing algorithm. So you can pass in a couple of parameters and play around with how smooth you want your, your features to be rendered. And then this is the final vector example. Um, so Map Server can serve out vector tiles. So this is what it looks like unstyled in, in open layers. Um, and the following talk is going to be talking about GeoStyler. Um, so it's using that to have the same styling on the, on the client side as the server side. So um, yeah, Map Server, you can set your output formats to anything that's available in GDAL. And in this case, it's a Mapbox vector tile output format. You can style your data in the map file. Um, and then for your WMS, then obviously Map Server will do the rendering. But if you want your vector tiles to have the same styling, um, you can use GeoStyler to take your map file and convert it into the, the Mapbox styling format. And then you can apply that in open layers. Um, you can also do it dynamically because Map Server can serve out SLD. So you can take that and use the GeoStyler JavaScript library to style your Map Server vector data. Um, so basically, it means that you can have then the same styling available as a WMS layer and as vector tile layers, layers. So in this example here, it's um, an open layers map, and it's switching between WMS and vector tiles. And it has the same, same styling for both. So it allows you to, to write your styling once and apply it to um, both a, a WMS service and, and vector tiles. So yeah, that was, those are the list of examples. Um, so really, the, the, kind of the aim was to show that Map Server has a lot of powerful functionality available. Um, map files might seem scary at first if you want a nice uh, GUI to start, start working away. But once you get used to them, they're, they're very powerful because you can use libraries, you can use your own whatever text uh, templating libraries you have in whichever language to generate them. And then they're nice and simple to deploy. They can't go too wrong because it's just a, a text file. And yeah, because Map Server has been around for a while, there's lots of um, powerful cartography options have, have built up over the years. Um, and yeah, as GDAL is, is now a required dependency, um, yeah, Map Server takes, takes full advantage of GDAL. So the whole virtual file formats, all the cloud, um, cloud native data formats are all available to be read into Map Server. So then you can use yeah, any data formats and then use Map Server to, to render, render them out. And then the nice thing is that um, all of the OGC standards are, are built in. So if you're creating a WMS layer, it's, it's kind of one more line to have WFS 
one more setting, you can have vector tiles, a couple more lines, you can have um, OGC features API, and all that's kind of available in for a single single map file. Okay, so that was hopefully gives you an idea, some of some ideas to, to work with Map Server. So um, yeah, thanks for your time, and these are available in my.